When someone is born a few kilometers from Sant'Aga da Bolognese, hearing is the most developed sense, or at least that's what I remember. In the distance, I could hear the whistling race car approaching. Then I would literally jump on the stairs of my grandmother's house and would stay there just to watch it run by. Renato Bozzetto in one of his movies has his train. I had my contach. That was one of the masterpieces that possessed me when I was a kid. A feeling that hasn't changed over time with the inevitable evolution of those 12 chorus singers, later engaged by Diablo in 1990, by Murcielago in 2002, and finally by Aventador. Everybody knows, right? In the world we have cars, sports cars, supercars, and then the aspirated V12. In a few words, a rare and fantastic kind to be respected and admired. And that's why Aventador S is an even more sacred monster, because that S, as in Lamborghini tradition, is gifted with superlative upgrading. The Symphonic Dozen was born in 1966 with Miura from the genius of Dalat and Stanzani, an aspirated myth on the new 6.5 liter powered S with 40 horsepower, more than previous Aventador, totaling 740 and 690 Newton meters at 5,500 rotations. But its power requires 250 rotations more, thus reaching 8,500. Despite the various optimizations like the 20% lighter 3 output exhaust, the mass weighs 1,575 kilos, distributed 43% on the front and 57 on the back. But we must consider that the S carries four heavy steering wheels, while the four-wheel drive is well known. Calm down. Whoa, bull! On the road, we know we cannot always drive the way we want. We must get used to the context, to the limits, to the weather. Therefore, even the car, with all its setup, must follow you. And here, in order to do that, it's all very simple. All you need is just three letters. In reality, ego is the map otherwise known as individual a very useful fourth option that allows the driver to individually select and save the parameters for engine, tronic power steering, and magnetoriological suspensions. But it's not only marketing since steering a V12 on the panoramic roads near Valencia is not a trivial matter. Why? Well, first of all, Aventador is huge, 4.80 meters long and 2 meters wide. Visibility is limited, and with any map at each acceleration, you'll immediately find yourself unmercifully pumping the six small cylinders of the enormous standard carbo ceramic brakes, which are astounding in terms of adjustability and tolerance. Instead, the steering wheel must be carefully studied. On the road, the four-carriage dynamic steering, thanks to separate actuators, connects to the rear wheel steering in the back. This way, the four steering wheels work in anti-phase, up to 70 kilometers per hour, resulting in a virtual reduction in pace that makes the S much more agile on narrow roads than the coupe. I appreciated this characteristic when I tested the old and new models on an ad hoc racetrack, the first one of many differences. And if there is something new this S has brought here inside the cockpit, it's the sound. Because from the outside, even the previous coupe would warm my heart, but then inside, it was a little too muffled. Here instead, all the V12 740 horsepower breaks into the cockpit and it's a party. The stereo really becomes almost useless. When we get in a regular vehicle, we appreciate the seats finishing, their seams, and then we concentrate on the infotelematic system. Even I could tell you about the personalized treats and add that now there is even the Apple CarPlay. But honestly speaking, when you get in a Lambo like this, you concentrate on the fighter-like power button taking off and going wild wherever possible while enjoying the crackling of the exhaust pipe. A more common note on the road compared to the clear cut of the speed limiting device. Difficult to reach if you want to hold on to your driving license. And that is why to really understand it, we'll drive to a more appropriate arena with adequate driving maps. And boom! Here we are running on the Ricardo Tormo circuit in Valencia, where the S from Emilia 
and partially Romagna feels better at home. With no ifs or buts, a bull like this deserves an adequate arena, like this racetrack. Its qualities were well explained at the press conference. 350 kilometers per hour maximum speed, 100 kilometers reached in 2.9 seconds, 208.8 seconds, and 324.2 seconds. But in order to put this into practice, a racetrack is fundamental, especially to understand the difference between sport and race modes. The latter is supposed to be perfect for the Ricardo Tormer curves. But it was not, at least for me. On the racetrack, 20% of the torque is up front, and everything is set up for the maximum trajectory precision. Every minimum imperfection is paid for. In my case, the understeer occurred more than once because I didn't want to set my time, but rather forced to try and find those little oversteering imperfections that can change your day, and I realized could only come with the sport. With the torque 90% on the back, it's easier to play with low transfer and push on the gas to extend the metaphorical amusement. Although it takes space and time to understand when the Mega P0 give in, 255 30R20s in the front and 355 2521s in the back. Their pressure was constantly monitored by Pirelli technicians who kept it at an optimal 2.7 at hot temperature. Maybe it's just the four steering wheels that make the Aventador a real novelty, an element which interacts with everything and made it necessary to modify the torque distribution, the steering, the four-wheel drive, because such an advanced rear axle interferes in both phase and anti-phase. In fact, the steering wheel, not always appreciated on the previous coupe, still focuses the attention even on the S version. It has improved, but compared to the old model, for those who want to split a bull's hairs, it is time-consuming to get used to the servotronic and adjust the rear axle to the various maps. But once you understand your own interpretation, you'll feel like you can dominate the arena. Of course, no bull is born with perfect horns, and even the S ones should have been longer. I'm referring to the shift paddles that sometimes on sharp bends force the driver to get his hands off the wheel. And always talking about transmission, the seven-speed gearbox is lightning fast and whips properly when used on racetrack. Not so fast in sport mode when times get longer, while it becomes slightly more delicate on the road. Comfort is really not for it. Holding the bull by the horns could seem a whole lot easier. A game for many. There is only one detail that allows only a few to grab it. The reason is simple. It requires 340,000 euros, optional not included, and one year of waiting time to get it. Not bad considering that its direct competitor, the Ferrari 12, starts at about 276,000 euros. Of course, the Aventador lines by the German Borsche are awesome. Functional to the front downforce, which has increased by 130%, but, above all, spectacular. Inspired by famous designers like Francesco Gandini. S is like stratospheric, sexy, symphonic, as you like. But this S raises even further the concept of V12 by Lamborghini, now mounted on four steering wheels. There are many refined references to the past that will drive customers crazy, but even more so all those far higher in number who will hear and watch it run by.